Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Okay, Ruben from San Antonio, Texas, Ruben's a good friend of mine, said, hey, hope everything is great. Just read your, your uh, tweet, <laughs> I hope that's correct, that you had surgery. If you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, that's what Ruben's talking about. My surgery went fine, I had sinus surgery and it's fine. Uh, he said, I'm going to do another drawing for Prehistoric Times Magazine, and the subject is Brachiosaurus. Other than Brachiosaurus, what other sauropods were considered Brachiosaurids? Uh, there was quite a few of them, Ruben. Um, man, you know my mind just went completely blank, and I, cannot, <laughs> I can't remember them. Uh, I tell you what, Ruben, I'll send you an email if once I remember who they are. I'm so sorry, I can't believe I did that. Um, he, he says, we also got tickets for Walking with Dinosaurs. That's going to be here in San Antonio, and Sabrina and the kids say hi. Uh, you know what? I'm so glad you got the tickets. That show is going to be incredible. I'm very excited about it. I'm getting ready, Ruben, to send out an email about my show, uh, which is my traveling exhibit. It opens here in San Antonio in October. And I really hope, Ruben, you can come in and be one of the volunteers because I always enjoy working with you. Tell Sabrina and your two boys I said hello. Uh, it's always great to hear from you guys, and I'm looking forward to seeing your family again. And by the way, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Prehistoric Times Magazine. It's a very good magazine. Ruben is an artist and he submits uh, uh, drawings to it all the time. He's a very good artist. Uh, you guys want to go out there and try to get that magazine. It's very good. It's got some great articles. It's a great magazine. Okay, Robert from Melbourne, uh, Victoria. Um, do you think T-Rex was a scavenger or an active predator? Uh, Robert, I believe, um, I believe T-Rex is an absolute predator. I think Given the opportunity, he would scavenge, but there's so many reasons why. Let me tell you this. If you go to my blog, you can go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the blog, and look through the archives. I wrote an article about why I believe Tyrannosaurus rex is a predator, and it's much more detailed than the answer that I'll give you. There's a couple of reasons why I believe he's a predator. Number one, his size. He's an enormous dinosaur. He has a high metabolism. Therefore, he burns a lot of calories. He cannot simply hope to find that something has died within walking distance of him. That's just, to me, that's irrational thinking. He's got to go out and actively look for prey. And so I, number one, believe that makes him a predator. Number two, you look at uh, uh, the design of his skull. He's got forward-facing eyes. Every animal in the animal kingdom who has clear binocular vision is designed solely to be able to chase something and keep its eye on it, so to speak. If this dinosaur was a scavenger, there would be absolutely no functionality in having eyes that face forward. Instead, he would have his eyes on the side of his head because it's irrelevant to him to be able to judge distance. The other things, uh, his sense of smell is remarkably powerful. Well, a powerful sense of smell is necessary to be able to give you early warning that prey is in your area. We, humans, who don't have the world's greatest sense of smell, we can smell something dead. It doesn't take a powerful sense of smell to smell something dead. So an incredible sense of smell is something that predators rely on. Uh, scavengers um, uh, like vultures do have an incredible sense of smell, but that's because they usually spend their time three and four and 500 feet in the air searching for prey. They need that sense of smell because they're needing to smell something 500 feet below them. Tyrannosaurus rex, on the other hand, is at ground level where the, where the smell of rotting carcasses lingers. And so uh, I think a sense of smell determines that. But anyway, go to my blog and you can read the whole information of why I believe Tyrannosaurus is a predator. Uh, Dakin from Pima, Arizona. I always love getting your questions, Dakin. Uh, Guanlong was the earliest type of Tyrannosaur and was discovered having feathers. Is this true? Uh, if this is true, do you believe that some of the smaller Cretaceous tyrannosaurs like Nanotyrannus, uh, Siamotyrannus, and Albertosaurus had guanlong feathered traits. Uh, guanlong absolutely had what appears to be feathers on his body. Now these are not big long flowing feathers like you'd see on a peacock. They're really more like down kind of fuzz feathers. Uh, but those on the tail were pretty big. I've also studied a lot of the small raptors that have clearly have feathers. I saw one uh, about a month ago that was just staggering to me. Um, I have every reason to believe that all predatory dinosaurs may have had some kind of feathers. I didn't believe this before. I'll tell you, I, I fought constantly with people who would claim that Tyrannosaurus looked like a bird. Uh, I, I screamed at the top of my lungs. That's completely insane. But all the new discoveries have changed my opinion. Yeah, I think they had feathers. Now, I don't think they were completely feathered like a, like a bird. I don't think every ounce of their skin was covered. Not at all, because I think that would hurt them when it comes to body temperature regulation. 
But I do think that they were ornamented with feathers. I think they may have had feathers on their head, around their face, maybe on their shoulders, maybe at the base of their tail that would have been used to display during courtship. And so I think all of these smaller tyrannosaurs and even the bigger ones like Rex and Batar, I think they would have been feathered as well. Uh, Lewis from Toronto, Canada writes, is it possible that Spinosaurus, my favorite dinosaur, not mine, but, but Lewis's favorite dinosaur, was able to defeat a T-Rex? Well, uh, they don't live together at the same time. And I know you, you know that, Lewis, but um, uh, I think that Tyrannosaurus was just such a much more powerfully built dinosaur that it was more likely that Tyrannosaurus would win. But listen, man, on a given day, at a given moment, Spinosaurus could certainly hold his own. Spinosaurus, if Spinosaurus ever grabbed Tyrannosaurus by the throat, um, that could be the end of the game for Tyrannosaurus Rex. And Spinosaurus does have that elongated snout, which gave him a little further reach and could kind of help him pinpoint his target a little better. Um, Think of Tyrannosaurus Rex's head as a fist and think of Spinosaurus's uh, uh, skull as a finger. Well, you can swing your fist, but you may not be as accurate, but you can point your finger much more accurately. So Spinosaurus would have been able to point that finger right at the throat and grab him. So yes, I do think it's perfectly legitimate to think that Spinosaurus could have, uh, could have killed a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It would be tough though. Josh from Liverpool, England. Hi, Dinosaur George. I was, uh, I was wondering, I'm a big fan of raptors, and I have noticed that all raptors I've found all have that big curved claw on their foot. Uh, do all raptors have this? Yes, absolutely they do. Raptors belong to a family, scientifically, we call dromaeosaurs, or dromaeosaurs, depends on how you pronounce the word. Um, all members of that family have that curved killing claw. To be a member of the quote, raptor, unquote, family, means you have to have that killing claw. There are dinosaurs with the word raptor in their name, but they are not members of the raptor group. Uh, Eoraptor, Conchoraptor, Oviraptor, those dinosaurs are, uh, those dinosaurs have the name raptor in their name, but they're not members of the raptor family because they don't have that killing claw. So if you've got that killing claw, Josh, then you are absolutely a member of the raptor family. Okay, listen, thank you guys so much. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. If you want to ask a question about paleontology, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you're there, sign up to be a part of our newsletter. If you live in or around the San Antonio, Texas area, my traveling dinosaur exhibit opens October 15th through November the 1st. It is going to be an incredible exhibit, and hopefully we'll be coming to a city near you. Until then, uh, it's been great talking to you. It's always fun answering your questions. For you little guys out there, you make sure and practice your reading, and you practice your manners. And if you're good at those two things, you're going to be good at anything you do when you grow up. Thank you all so much. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.